This video covers the basic information you need to know about the internet. You've probably heard the phrase surf in the web or surf in the internet. What does that mean? We all probably use the internet but we don't know how. We open up a software application called a web browser. You may recognize some of these images. So there are quite a few different browsers you may use one of these either on your computer or your phone. So how do we get to see a web page? Well we can put the address in the address bar. The address is called the Uniform Resource Locator, the URL. So the whole address is the URL. Inside the address you'll probably see the name, familiar name of a company and that's called a domain name. So the URL consists of the beginning bit, the HTTP or HTTPS is a protocol. We have the domain name. At the end we have the name of the file and if that's in a folder, a directory, that will be before the file name. So we have the protocol, HTTP or HTTPS, the domain name, the directory and the file name. So when you request a web page, you are a client and your browser sends a message to a web server. It sends it back to you, the client. So that's a web server and a web, web client. The other alternative to a server and a client is called peer-to-peer, -peer, shortened to P2P. So that's an alternative architecture. So everything has an IP address. So this is how we know where to send different web pages, web documents. Everything has an IP address. A DNS server translates the domain name into this IP address for you. An IP address is a series of four numbers and the numbers are between 0 and 255 separated by dots. So here's an example of an IP address. So the internet is a network of computers and other devices. These devices are called routers and they're connected by communication links so normally cables but we also use wireless you may have heard the term internet and also the term web what's the difference well the internet is the network that connects everything together whereas the web is really the collection of web pages the documents that you see web servers hold documents once they're requested they're sent and a device such as your computer or your phone will show the document in a web browser. So how does this all work? Well, the client requests the data from the browser. The web server returns the data. The data is sent in packets. So the data can be split up into different packets and when they're sent we know there's one of two, two of two. So then your device can put the packets back together again to receive the whole message. Everyone follows some rules. These are called protocols. That's how the internet works all over the world. Some protocols, HTTP is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, TC stroke IP is transmission control protocol slash internet protocol. So it's protocols that everyone uses so the internet works. How does it know where to go? Well you can send a letter using a postal address and a computer similar but uses the IP address. So how do you get a web page? How do you request one? Well, you can type in the web address, the URL. On web pages, there are links. You can click a link to go to another document, or you can use what's called a search engine. 
you're probably familiar with search engines such as Google, Bing, Yahoo, there are many. If you work for a company, your company probably already provides the internet. If you're a home user, you'll probably use what's called an internet service provider. So they have a service that allows you to pay money to have internet in your home. You may use the internet uh, via a local company and many different telecommunication companies of other services in different countries. Also, some of these services provide email, although recently people normally use web-based email now, such as Gmail or Yahoo Mail. Other things we might use the internet for, we can use the internet for business. So we have seen the rise of businesses that are web-based, such as Amazon and eBay. So we have these sayings, B2C, which is business to consumer, the customer. B2B is business to business. And C2C is consumer to consumer, such as eBay. The speed of the internet, when you purchase or have a contract with your internet at home or in a company, you'll buy it on the condition of its download speed. So we measure that in bits per second, how fast it transmits data. A kilobit sends a thousand bits per second. That's kilobits per second. Megabits per second is a million bits per second and gigabits per second, GBPS, is a billion bits per second. History. When computers first started, they got quite big and quite hot, so they got put in a special room to keep them cool, so people had to devise a way to connect to these computers from outside the room, so they had a remote connection. After a while, it seemed better for many people or more than one person to be able to use a computer at one time called time sharing so this involved different people using a computer at the same time in the late 50s early 60s there was con some concerns over missile crisis and in america they set up darpa and that had a plan to build a large-scale computer network and that was called arpanet and in this uh, research they created protocols initial ones turned into tcp tcp stroke ip which other systems around the world use so they become compatible so systems this example is from france where networks of little computers connected together were connected so that was kind of internets we get the phrase internet from and other commercial systems uh, devised a system to be able to send f more files. Uh, so they devised packet switching, where we split the data into packets. Also, phone companies realized the potential of this and developed protocols so we could pay money to use their services, their network. So some other things you would need to know, the web pages are written in HTML. When you request a web document, the document's in text and it has tags that give instructions on how the browser should show and present that text to you. That's the HTML tags. Then we realized that people wanted more images and sound and media. So Web2 describes the addition of multimedia to the web. We have standards for not just the internet, but also things like Wi-Fi. So you can use cable-less internet connection. We have voice over IP, which most of you might know as services such as Skype. And obviously there are many other services on the internet. We have social networks, podcasts, blogs, and video providing services such as YouTube. Can we trust the web? Well, we do have some problems with security. 
there are malicious software which shortened to malware. Normally people call these viruses which is a type of malware. We have things like viruses, worms, trojan horses, spyware and they're designed to cause damage to computers. So viruses are often sent as attachments of emails and can be destructive to your computer. Worms replicate themselves and can damage your computer. Trojan horses hide and then given a date or some event will open up and cause damage and spyware does what you think it will do. It spies on what you're doing on your computer. There are uh, many other different types of security concerns. Here's some more. Spoofing, sending fake email, phishing, pretends it's from a, a good company to gain confidence and get information, confidential information, and farming redirects you to a fake web page. So you think you're going to some web page and actually you're going to a different one. Other concerns, spam has been a problem historically where people send messages, especially emails that you're not really interested in trying to sell you things. Cookies can be good, can be bad, depending on your point of view. Cookies are text documents that come with web pages that give a kind of history of what you're looking at which companies use to provide services so you don't have to keep on putting your information in um, but some people say they're a bad thing because they're making information public and perhaps you don't want that so some concerns about the internet is that there's a lot of information that you would rather keep private and it's made public so beware there especially the terms and conditions of services that you use other information on the internet is not correct so not everything on the internet is correct and believable so we have misinformation and also we have different attacks on the internet called hacking such as a denial of service where uh, a web server is attacked by someone sending loads of messages and then the service can't cope with that amount of traffic so that's called a denial of service and if it's from more than one computer it's called a distributed denial of service okay time for some questions and the answers what is p2p question one question two what four parts make up a url question three what is HTTP? Question four. How fast is 100 Mbps megabits per second? That's question four. Question five. What was the name of the original DARPA large scale network? What was that called? Okay, let's go through the answers. What is P2P? Peer-to-peer. -peer. What four parts make up a URL? We have the HTTP, the protocol, the domain name, the directory, and the file name. What is HTTP? It's the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. How fast is 100 megabits per second? Well, it's 100 million bits per second, 100 times 1 million. Final question, question five. What was the name of the original DARPA large-scale network? It was ARPANET. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe. See you for the next video. Bye now.